What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first real video in my Python programming series. In this video we will be going over a few different things. We're going to start this video off by going over the basic math capabilities of the Python programming language. Then we'll jump into the concept of variables, which is basically just assigning values to different names. And I'll also go over the different types of variables there are. And then finally, we'll jump into the super fun, complex math capabilities of the Python language. Anything that you can do on your calculator, you can also do in Python, which makes it a super powerful tool. If you haven't done so already, make sure to set up your Python development environment. Uh, I'll post a link on how to do that on a previous video I made, either here or here. I don't really know which side it comes up on, and that will just go over setting up Python 3 and also Sublime Text, which is the editor that I use in all of these videos. And also, I just want to mention before I begin, the best way to learn Python is by doing. So make sure to follow along with this video and also check out the description of this video for some links to exercises that you can do. I think at this point in time, probably the best exercise you can go through is what's called Python Turtle. In the description, there'll be a link that goes over this. And it's basically just this cool 2D drawing package that you can use in Python. It's very straightforward and it's pretty fun to see how your drawings kind of, your, your little animations develop as your Python skills develop. All right, that's all I got to begin this video. Let's just jump into this tutorial. All right, to start up this video, open up a new Sublime Text window and save a new Python file with the name something like lesson1.py. You can name it whatever you want, but just make sure to include that .py file extension. That's how we know it's a Python file. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this in my documents folder, but you can save it wherever you want. In the setup video, I showed you guys that you can use this function called print, surrounded by parentheses, to print out basic, basic pieces of text like hello world. And then if I save that with control S or command S if you're on a Mac, and then run it with going up to tools, then build, or just typing in control V as it says here, it prints out the words, hello world here. And I can change that piece of text to whatever I want. So I could change it up to be something like, Keith is the man. And if I save that with control S and build it, it says Keith is the man down here. All right, let's move into something a little bit more interesting. Let's start doing some math in Python. And also, I just want to quickly note that feel free, if I'm going too slow for you, to put me on 1.25 or 1.5 speed times speed. All right, so we can do some, all, all math we can think of, we can do in Python, basically. So start out, let's just do a basic addition problem, 2 plus 4. I save that and then run it. It will evaluate the 2 plus 4 and give us 6. Ah, uh, where is it? It's not here. So it did run this 2 plus 4, but we actually have to go ahead and print out that two plus four, so it actually logs the answer to the screen. So if I do print two plus four, and then make sure to save it between whenever you make a change to your code, and then run it with control B, it gives us six. We can do the other basic math using a kind of, so subtraction is pretty intuitive, just the minus sign. Negative two, perfect. Multiplication, you might not know what it is right off the bat, but it's the asterisk. So if we want to multiply something, two asterisks, asterisk, four is two times four. Run that, it gives us eight, cool. Um, if we're gonna do division, we do two backslash four, and that does division, 0 0.5. And I just wanna note real quick, if you are running Python 2, you might actually see zero here instead of 0 0.5. The reason for that is that Python 2, if you take two integer values and divide them, it returns an integer value. It doesn't return a decimal. But in Python 3, they made this change so that if you divide two integer values, it gives you the decimal value that you expect. So 2 divided by 4 in Python 3 is 0 0.5. Um, we can also do exponents. So exponents, let's say we wanted to do 2 to the third power. That would be 2, double asterisk, 3. So that's 2 to the third power. Save it, run it. That gives us 8 as we expect. I think I'll probably put a math cheat sheet in the description of this video. So if you need a place to go to remember all these commands, check out that math cheat sheet. So that gives us eight. 
And all right, let's move into something. Uh, well, let's move into variables, the concept of variables, and that's storing values in names. So let's say I wanted to store a variable called age. And I'm currently 23 years old, so we want to set that to 23. So if I use an equals sign, 23, that's going to set the variable age to the value of 23. So I go ahead and now print out that age and run that. It Instead of printing the word age, it prints out the value stored in age, which is 23. And this is kind of the key distinction for why when we printed out text, we use quotations. The quotations tell the print statement, hey, we want exactly this piece of text called age. So if I printed this, it would not give me 23, it would give me age. So that's a key distinction between variables and string text. Okay, and we can save other types of variables. So let's say I wanted to, instead of age, let's say I wanted to do name. So my name is Keith. And so I want to save a variable called Keith. And I put that in a variable name called name. So if I now print out name and run that, it gives me Keith, just what I wanted to get back. So this type, the text objects, in programming, that's known as a string. So anytime you use exact text, we call these string objects. So this is the string object Keith. And I'm building that. One more interesting piece of type of Boolean we can do, or a type of variable we can do is called a Boolean. And a Boolean value is either true or false. So let's call a variable like, is Python fun? And yeah, yeah it is. You gotta think Python's super fun. So we're gonna set this to true. So is Python fun? If I print that out, is Python fun? It, it says true, yeah, Python's super fun. And just note that you have to use the uppercase T in true. If I did a lowercase T, it would think it's the variable true instead of the Boolean value true. So if I ran that, it would say true is not defined. And maybe we were being pessimistic and we said, maybe we weren't happy with this video so far and we said, is Python fun? We wanted to set that to false. We would just do the false with a capital F. So, and you see that it highlights purple and that's how you know you have the correct value there. But uh, we'll say that's true. So to reiterate, we have integer values here. 23 is an integer value. Keith is a string value, and then finally, is Python fun? That stores a Boolean value. I'll put these in the cheat sheet too. Um, the, these are the different types of variables. We also can have like other types like maybe uh, age two, and we put this as a decimal. So maybe I'm, you know, I just turned 23. So let's say I'm 23.02 or something like that. So now this is a decimal value. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna delete that just to clear up some space. All right, I think this is a good time to also mention the different ways we can name variables. So as you can see, I just did age all lowercase here, I did name all lowercase here, and then this one I did a little bit more complex. I did uh, some capitals, some lowercase. Um, so when we name a variable, we can use lowercase letters, we can use uppercase letters, we can use underscores, and we can use numbers, but we can't start with a number. We can start with the letters, uh, and then numbers can be included, but we have to make sure we start with a number, or with a letter. So we could take this is Python fun, and it would be a totally valid variable name to like kind of stretch it out and be kind of obnoxious with it and call it something like is ah, is Python programming fun? So this is super long, but it works just fine as a variable name. Is Python programming fun? True. And I can print that out. Is Python programming fun? True. And I'm pretty sure you guys can check this out if you want. I'm pretty sure the length of this can be pretty much as long as you want. 
but for good practices, you should keep it pretty short and descriptive. The reason we want to use variables is so that we can kind of be descriptive and nice and neat and write our code like English text. Like if you see age in your code, you know, oh, they're talking about some age. Um, even this is Python programming fun. It gets a little bit long, but it tells me something about the code. Like I'm just not throwing a bunch of trues around. I'm, 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 it, it's giving meaning to my code. So when we write these names, we want to just give like meaning, kind of be short and concise, but give meaning to whatever we're doing. So like, like name, you know, it's short and concise, but it gives meaning to what I'm passing around. And that's Keith. Um, and so you'll see these variables all throughout, um, all throughout your Python experience. All right, let's move into something more complicated. Let's start doing some kind of math that might not be as intuitive. So I want you guys to try to figure out what this percent sign is doing in my code. So let's say I did 12% two, ran that, gives me zero. If I do 12% three, it gives me zero. If I do 12% five, what is it gonna give me? It's gonna give me two. And then I do tw uh, print 12% seven, gives me five. So try to figure out, like take a second to try to figure out if you can uh, think or figure out what this percent sign is doing. You can plug in your own numbers here, but it actually is a pretty useful function, but it's not intuitive what it does if you just maybe are seeing it the first time. Take a second to do that. All right, so I'm gonna explain what it does. So this is actually, this percent sign is taking, is called modulo division. And so if we did 12 divided by two, 12 divided by two, two would go into 12 perfectly six times. And it gives us zero as a remainder. Uh, if we did 12 divided by three, it goes in perfectly four times and gives us zero as a remainder. If we did 12 divided by five though, it would divide into it two times, but be remainder two. So it's basically just giving us the remainder of the division problem. And 12 by, divided by seven is the same thing. It goes into it once, but has remainder five. So if I did something like 12 divided by eight, it gives us four. So that's what the percent sign does. And it, it helps us out because we could do like, we can kind of figure out things are odd or even using this modulo division. Like if I did any number modulo divided by two, and if it, there's a remainder of one, then it's odd. If there's a remainder of zero, it's even. So that's kind of a cool little thing. Uh, also, you have stuff like floor division. So if you do double backslash, um, say 12, double backslash five, and run that, it gives us just two. So it's taking the 12 divided by five, which is something like uh, 2.4, and it's just returning the floor of that. It's returning the whole number, the first whole number that is uh, less than 2.4, which is just two. So that's floor division. And we can just, I can keep going on and on about all these different functions, but if you wanna have a complex, like you wanna know all the different math things you can do, there's this library in Python called math. So I'm gonna bring this in real quick. So this is the Python math library and it has all sorts of useful functions that you can use in Python. And this is just one library. If there's even more things that are not found here, just do a Google search on like how to do this in Python. You'll probably find a library that includes it. So let's say I wanted to include, I wanted to do a complex math. Uh, let's say I wanted to take the sign of something. So say we we're in a trigonometry class and I wanted to take the sign of a value. So sine of like 12. And if you don't know what sine means, don't worry about it. Just a complex math trigonometric equation. And I run that. So sine is not defined. Uh oh. Why is it not defined? Well, it's not defined in Python as like Python at its core. But if we go into that library that I just showed you and I type in a control F for sign, you see that it gives me math.sign. So I can use math.sign to find the sign of a value. So let's do change this to math 
dot sign of 12. And shoot, it still is not working. Why is that this not working? I did exactly what it said. And the reason for this is because to use this math library, Python doesn't know what this math library is unless we import it to our file. So we can import all sorts of libraries. So we're importing math and then doing math.sign of 12. And if you didn't know off the top of your head, math.sign of 12 is negative 5.3, whatever. So yes, we can do math.sign. And let's say I just want to do math.sign of like 90 degrees or 180, 180 degrees. That should give us, that's at the zero axis, so that should give us zero. And shoot, it doesn't give us zero. And if I look into the documentation, the reason it didn't give us zero is because it returns the sine of x radians. So I have to do this in radians. So 180 in radians is pi. So if I do math.sine of pi, pi is not defined. So actually there's a, in the same library, if I look up pi, math.pi, I can actually use this constant. So you could use math.e, you could use math.tau, math.infinity if you want like to use some sort of infinite value. So math.sine of math.pi, this should give us zero. Oh, what the heck? Oh, basically does. It's kind of weird that it gives us, <laughs> this is saying <laughs> times 10 to the negative 16th. It's saying it's not exactly zero, but it's pretty much just zero. So, I could do math by pi divided by two, that gives us one. Pretty cool stuff. So that's, um, that's I mean all I really wanna cover in this video. We've done basic math, the addition subtractions, we've done variable names, so I could do like uh, math value equals math dot sine of math dot pi divided by two. And now if I just printed out math value, it gives us this 1.0 that we had in the last thing. So that was variable names. Uh, and then we went into the complex math. We went into the, you know, the modular division, which was that percent sign. And we went into the floor division, which was the double backslash. Uh, and then finally I went in and showed you guys how to use this math library where you have all sorts of cool math capabilities as you can see in this thing. Check this out if you want. It gives us all of this. All right, so that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. Hope you learned something. Um, as I said before, check out the Turtle Python package to have some kind of fun things you can do and show off to your friends at this stage in your Python development. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss any of the future tutorials that I'm gonna be posting. I'm gonna be trying to post them weekly, so be sure to subscribe to not miss one of those. And if you learned anything in this video, it would mean a lot to me if you gave that a big thumbs up. Um, it encourages me to make more videos like this. All right, thanks guys for watching. Peace.